Yo, what's up guys, Teacher Paul over here, and today we are reacting to this interesting video called Paris's Grand Plan to Become Europe's Greenest City. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe, and you know that I'm starting to make one travel video every single day, so if you are from another country and you want me to react to specific things from your country, let me know in the con comments down. Let me know in the comments down below. Paris is famous for its food, museums, and landmarks, oh, but beautiful. there's also some less desirable things like heavy traffic, poor air quality, and most notably, a lack of green space. But that's all about to change. Paris is so beautiful, guys. I've been there like three times. Look at this. It's so well organized. Seriously, look at that. Looks so beautiful. And there's a lot of green. A lot of green already. Wow, I can see the Eiffel Tower from here. Oh, this is just a beautiful shot. Aerial shot. ...of green space. But that's all about to change, as the capital of fashion gets the mother of all makeovers. One that will see a challenge for the title of Europe's greenest city. Oh, wow. If there's one thing Paris doesn't have, it's enough greenery. Just 9.5% of its land is dedicated to gardens and green areas, wow. lower than any other major European city. Really? 33%, London beats it three times over, while in Oslo, a whopping 68% of the city is green space. <laughs> I know London has a lot of green, but Oslo, 68% is green? Wow. Paris doesn't just want to climb off the bottom of this league table, it's set its sights on competing for the title. By 2030, it plans to have planted areas covering half the city, everything wow. from rooftop gardens to entire new parks. In total, over 170,000 more trees are expected to be added in the next five years. All Mr. Several Beast. projects are being put forward to help achieve this goal, but one kind of stands out above the rest. The Champs-Élysées, the city's most famous street, is set to be transformed into this urban garden. Really? It involves removing road lanes and replacing them with pedestrianised green space, adding tree tunnels to enhance air quality, and introducing dedicated cycle lanes. That's quite a lot of work that needs to be done around one of the city's most historic landmarks, a bustling hive of activity for more than 150 years. And won't that increase the traffic? As well as connecting the Arc de Triomphe to the Place de la Concorde, the avenue offers some of the city's best shops, theatres and restaurants, and it regularly hosts events like the Bastille Day Parade. In normal times, that is, not in the middle of a pandemic, hundreds of thousands of people a day would come here, and it's not exactly unpopular. So why the major facelift? Well, it might be a hit with the tourists, but the locals are no longer quite so keen. Many residents now avoid it, claiming that the old boulevard has lost its splendour and cultural importance, something that would have been unthinkable a few decades ago. Yeah, when I was there, there was actually a riot, and it was closed, and there were people on the streets. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty bad. Independent businesses have been replaced by large chain stores, and air pollution has become a big issue. With tens of thousands of vehicles passing through each day, nitrogen dioxide levels here are double the limit set out by the World Health Organization. Pedestrianizing much of the roadway would halve the amount of traffic and dramatically improve air quality. Okay. Already, the Champs-Élysées is closed to traffic for one Sunday each month, along with the first four arrondissements. Open but then that would divert traffic to another area, won't 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 that be worse maybe i don't know bring up a vast area of the city center to just pedestrians the new project will hopefully entice more parisians back to the promenade and encourage more local traders to set up shop reinvigorating the city's cultural district if you are french and you're watching this right now let me know in the comments do you agree do you support this what are your thoughts on this the 300 million US dollar scheme is part of a wider plan to make Paris greener, million. with less cars and better air quality. Although work on the Champs Elysees won't begin until after the 2024 Olympics. In the meantime, other similar projects are due to get underway across the city, including one that will spruce up the biggest attraction of all, the Eiffel Tower. Okay. Here, a new park will be built around the base of the iconic structure, 
turning more than 100 acres of land into one of the largest areas of green space in the whole of Paris. Wow. Now, this part of the city is already quite leafy, but a lot of people find the current parkland overcrowded and inaccessible, which is why the decision was made to reimagine and extend the existing gardens. Stretching for over a mile, the plan involves constructing a green amphitheatre at Place du Trocadero across the river and converting the Pont de Yena into a pedestrian garden bridge, although that idea didn't go down so well in London. On top of that, several urban that, forests are no. popping up around the city, including no, 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 outside no. Hotel de Ville, the city hall, and the Gare de Lyon train station. Paris has already gone green in other ways too. In 2020, the world's largest urban farm opened here, around 7% of the city is going completely car-free, and almost half of the street-level parking spaces are being removed. That's around wow. 60,000 overall. Wow. So, so, what I see, I foresee cars getting much more expensive. If they want to go through with this, then they're probably going to do what Singapore did and raise the cars, uh, the price of the cars, so that people will start using less cars. All of this sounds like great news for the people of Paris. It's going to make the French capital an even more desirable place to live and visit once everything is finished. But not everyone's pleased with the idea. Some motorist groups are angry about having less space to drive and park in what is already a highly congested city, especially for local people who rely on their cars to get around. The idea, of course, is that these measures ultimately reduce congestion and encourage people to use other forms of transport. The fact is, Paris has been under pressure to act for some time, and not just because of poor air quality and traffic. It's needed to clean itself up ahead of the Olympics, and it was here that the International Treaty on Climate Change, the aptly named Paris Agreement, was signed back in 2015. Okay. It wouldn't have looked great if the city where such an historic agreement was made did nothing to tackle its very visible problems with traffic, pollution and lack of green space. Many have been pleasantly so surprised though. by the lengths Paris is going to to freshen up its image, a move that will hopefully inspire other cities to embark on a green renaissance of their own. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you're subscribed to Tomorrow's Build. Guys, I really liked this video. This video was really well made, really clear, really um, explanatory and educational. So if you guys enjoyed it too, go ahead and subscribe to Tomorrow's Build. They, they do a pretty good job. In any case, I hope you guys um, subscribe to my channel too. Don't forget to like and let me know if you agree with, with what they're trying to do in Paris or you don't. Let me know. Why? What are the benefits? What are the disadvantages? I will see you in the next one. And if you want me to react to your country, leave it in the comments. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.